Hi, I'm Berta. I'm a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh and I recently submitted my thesis on biogeographic patterns and drivers in the deep North Atlantic under the European Horizon 2020 Atlas project, which focuses on understanding and improving knowledge of deep sea ecosystems and associated species in the North Atlantic. Today, I'm going to show you how the use of publicly available digitized biodiversity data can help towards advancing knowledge in deep sea biogeography to inform management application. The need to balance the use of natural resources and conservation efforts is highlighting the importance of deep sea benthic biodiversity, particularly that of complex habitats such as vulnerable marine ecosystems or VMEs from now on, that include cold water corals and sponges, among others. VMEs are susceptible to human disturbances and climate change, as they are often long-lived, slow-grown and late-maturing. Their conservation significance lies in their critical role in the functioning and services of the ocean and planet. The effective management of VMEs and the achievement of conservation targets should be based on the full understanding of the ecological processes structuring VME species diversity and communities. However, the distribution patterns of VMEs are poorly known and especially in the high seas, where records and governance measures are limited. One way to deal with data-limited situations is the use of biogeographic classifications that are based on oceanographic proxies. However, if they are to be implemented, they need to adequately represent deep-sea VME biogeography. The two existing deep sea biogeographic classifications, the Global Open Oceans and Deep Sea Bed, or GOODS, and the Ecological Marine Units, or EMUS, schemes, are based on expert opinion and oceanographic variables. Therefore, they need to be validated with real species distribution data to understand if they represent VME distribution. Consequently, I validated these two schemes using species distribution data collected from a range of public sources including OBIS, NOAA and the ISIS databases, and I could conclude that an improved goods could be used in a spatial management of the deep North Atlantic. On the other hand, investigating the ecological processes sustaining diversity patterns of VMEs is also necessary for the adequate management of the deep sea. For example, understanding that neutral processes like random dispersal limits are important suggests that we must preserve stepping stones to maintain species connected and resilient. On the other hand, recognizing that individual taxa respond to environmental factors shows that climate change will put pressure on certain groups and further degrade stepping stones. So using the same data set as the previous analysis, I was able to classify the North Atlantic into eight bioregions representing different assemblages of VMEs, which can be seen in this map. Then, I looked at how those bioregions are sustained and found out special processes related to dispersal limitation, with or without association to historical processes, drive those patterns. The bioregions found in this study could inform the GOODS scheme in terms of refining the North Atlantic provinces. In conclusion, sharing publicly data offer an opportunity to contribute knowledge to marine spatial planning initiatives. Given the current exciting times in deep sea conservation with the start of the decade of ocean science and the development of an international binding legal instrument for biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, we must do our best with the knowledge we currently hold to help inform deep sea policy and the subsequent implementation of measures. Although the outcomes of these studies presented here offer mounting evidence of patterns and drivers in the deep sea, future research of deep sea biogeography should focus on the investment of population genetics studies that truly unravel connectivity of the species and resilience of populations in the deep North Atlantic. Thank you.